Dating to relationships, from sex to love, from Christianity to politics, from darkness to life, you have now entered into the real zone. Welcome to Conversations with Trent, where no topic of conversation is safe from discussion. Now, here he is, Mr. Epic himself, Trent Williams. going on what's going on what's going on beautiful people welcome to another conversation with trent and friends featuring the lovely coach d we're gonna do a little disclaimer real quick before we uh get the show started here actually um to you guys surprise we're not gonna be streaming live on facebook anymore any of those platforms that actually place chains on us and muzzle us and whatnot so if you want to catch us you'll catch us on b2gunitytv.com Live streaming on your Roku channel every single week, but 24-7 on demand. You can catch Coach D and I 24-7 on demand. Anytime for some straight talk, gumbo talk, Coach D's, Coach D's real talk, all that good stuff. So Facebook actually um, blocked me from streaming because Coach D and I brought up Palestine and Israel situation going on, and they knew we were going to do a show the following week. so. I'm able to do that over there anymore. So, but here's the thing. We're on a platform. So, you know, hey, we're only doing that for, you know, a few few people, a few people that actually follow us over there anyway. But you guys could actually catch us unscripted, unchained, and everything on B2GUnityTV.com. Live streaming on your Roku channel, right there in your living room. So good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. We're talking about talk that talk, effective communication. Let's be honest and clear. In today's climate, in today's society, we make a post in hopes the person that wronged us sees it, and that's not effective communicating. Again, we create posts and all that stuff when we when we take issue with someone in hopes that they see it. That's not communicating at all. So let's bring Coach in. Let's talk about it. Hey there. Hey, 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 hey. So now, now you're a Facebook jail veteran? <laughs> <laughs> they put me in chains. They put me in chains. They put me in chains. They well, released been, me, but I was warned. I have been in Facebook jail more times than I can count. I already know. I already yep. know. <laughs> so for the good folks, if they want to catch us, they can catch us on Spotify Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and of course, B2GUnityTV.com is actually our platform where we're live streaming on the Roku channel. So they can catch us 24-7 streaming or they can catch us live streaming right now at B2GUnityTV.com, right there on the Roku channel. Good stuff. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to get ready to start talking about communication and active listening. Gotcha, gotcha. So let's talk about it. Let's talk that talk, as you would say. Let's talk that talk, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I, was, I started looking over that and doing a little research on it and watching over, you know, all the platforms as far as social media goes. And I've done this in the past myself. Where if I, you know, take issue with someone who's actually, I feel that wronged me, I'm going to post something in hopes that they see it. That's not effective communicating at all. Mm-hmm. Instead of having a civil conversation, speaking to that person in person or over the phone, you put it on social media. Yeah. Makes no sense to me. Yeah. 
I hate vague booking because I'm nosy. I want to know what's going on. <laughs> so just tell if you're gonna share your mess, share all of it. Don't don't be like playing around the bush with it. Yeah. Just go all in, huh? Yeah. Either go all in or don't do it at all. You know what I mean? Like put it all out there. So just talk that out. talk, Coach D. Why why do we avoid communicating and why do we run from it? And actually, you know what, you know what? This topic came up because I was going back and forth over the, this thing that we did over the last couple of weeks about giving up, men and women giving up, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And the one word that kept going, kept popping up, communication, communication, yeah. communication. Yeah, because uh, communication for some can be very difficult, especially if you were as a child never had a voice and were constantly told be quiet. Right. Like when people, when people say children should be in a children's place, you're causing harm. Because you invariably shut that child up. And child, children who are shut up as children don't know how to communicate as adults. Right. Because they'll walk on they'll walk on eggshells, right? Because they're not sure if they're allowed to communicate. Right, right. So if you are not able to be vulnerable, if you don't feel safe, then you're not going to talk to somebody. Because communication requires that. Good True. communication. True. True. So, Let's talk about five effective uh, ways to communicate. The number one thing is listening. Mm -hmm. Number two is my favorite, straight talk. Number three, nonverbal communication. Mm -hmm. Press management. And to top it off, number five, emotional control. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? So, yeah, well, we have to remember that listening means fully hearing and absorbing not listening to respond because some people will hear the first three words and then start forming their response in their head but right. actually communicating requires you to listen to everything that person has said absorb it and process it and then respond to it right. because that way you have all the information so you can provide proper feedback most people Absolutely. don't do that Absolutely. a lot of people have trouble with straight talk because they haven't been taught effective communication. So if you haven't been taught effective communication, straight talk can come across as an attack. But if somebody's using I, it's won't put people on defensive. But as you soon right. as you start using the word you, you do this, you do that, you are, you, right? That will put people on defense and effective communication is going to come to a complete halt. Right? It's um, interesting. Yeah. What was uh, emotional control? I'm, I'm a passionate person, so when it comes to emotional control, I'm like, mm, it depends on what they're being emotional about. Right. Because you can be righteously angry. If somebody has wronged you, you have the right to be righteously True. angry. True. And if somebody says no, then they're being manipulative. Right. Right. If you've done somebody wrong and so, well, you shouldn't be angry about that. I'm like, well, you're just a gaslighting. Exactly. Person. Exactly. I get that, but you know, I've had my run-ins with with folks who have wronged me. And I've had yeah. my running with folks who I've wronged. Mm -hmm. And I've always been the person to take responsibility for my wrong and a part of it. But yeah. I find that when, when you take responsibility, some people still run from the conversation. Why is that? Are they ready to have the conversation? Or do they even want to have the conversation? Yeah. Like Just because you're ready to have a conversation doesn't mean the other person is. Yeah. And nobody's required to have a conversation with you just because you're ready. Right. Sometimes you have to ask people, do you have the the emotional space to have a, a deep conversation with me at this time? Right. Because if somebody's had a bad day at work, they may not. Right. And you just make may make a bad day worse. There's a weird lag. I mean, <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. Um, when you're communicating and you're fully understanding where somebody's coming from that type of communication looks completely different because then there's no name calling. There's no yelling. There's no screaming. It's a very calm, peaceful kind of communication. So you're saying people will be more receptive if you're speaking to them in a calm, a calm manner. Well, it, if you don't put them on the defense, like if um, I asked you to do something, you didn't do it. If I come out and go, Hey, Trent, you didn't do blah, 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 blah. What's your first reaction? Yeah. Right? Again. And if I go, hey, Trent, 
I was hoping that maybe if possible, if this could be done, what's your reaction? Nine times out of 10, I'll do it. Yeah. So it's, it's how you, how you approach the conversation, right? And you can be the calmest person in the world. If that person has issues communicating, it doesn't matter how you approach them. They're not going to be able to reach out. Right. And see that over the years, that's been one of my, one of my pet peeves. Like when I want to have the conversation, I gotta, I gotta have that say, I gotta talk about it. I have to, I have to talk about it. That's been one of my problems. And you mentioned that earlier. If they're not ready, they're not ready. Yeah. But I'm like, you know, that's, that's the fixer in me. Let's, let's fix this. Let's fix this. But you well, know. Some, sometimes the fixer just needs to be a listener. Great point. It's because, and that, I think that's where a lot of people get in trouble. Like Xavier's had a bad day. I'll ask him, do you want advice or do you want me to listen to you? Because it's two different things. Right. That's true. Right? Yeah, Listening just right. means you can say whatever you want and I'm just going to listen and absorb it and let you get it out. If you want right. advice, I'm going to listen to what you say. I'm going to process it and, and give you an opinion on what is going on. Well, that's right? one of the things I'm still working on. Even at this age, I'm still a fix and I'm still working on that fixing thing, you know, because I, I don't like to leave things unsaid. I don't, yeah. I don't like to leave things unraveled. I don't, I, I have a problem with that. I'll be honest with you. I really have a problem with that because if, you know, if it needs to be said, I'm going to say it. Right. I'm definitely going to say it. And I, you know, I'm a communicator. I'm a communicator. I love to communicate and I love to express. And here's the thing, there's nothing wrong with that, right? But if there's some, if the person you're talking to is not a communicator, then you have to meet them where they are, Yeah. right? And I think a lot of people have problems with that is that they, they refuse to meet people where they are or they refuse to match their communication style. Right. Right, if somebody needs you to, um, if, you have, if you're very long-winded and you're, have, you're big on circular talking, if right. you have somebody who requires you to say one, two, three, four, five, I'm done. Right. That's going to be a communication issue because the communication, unless you adjust to their communication style, there's going to be communication problems. Right. You right. know, one thing that helped me out with the, uh, you know, communicating was actually this, you know, going through this recovery because I was already a patient man, but I became a more patient man within this recovery. Mm -hmm. And I had a situation last year where I wanted to speak on it, but I didn't speak on it. I was very patient about it, and I got silent. That's the nonverbal communication. Yeah. I got silent about it, and then let things boil over and let it, you know, let it, you know, roll over. And they came to me to have a yeah. conversation. But at that moment, I knew that speaking with them, they wouldn't be able to get where I was coming from. So I just got quiet. So yeah, they heard me even though I wasn't saying anything. Yeah, but that quiet can be, some people use that quiet as a punishment. Where somebody wants to talk Dig to a you. Deep, instead, that, that was deep. Dig a little deep. Some people, because the, it's, it's a manipulation tactic. Some people, if they don't want to communicate with people, if you're telling them something that they don't want to hear, instead of mm -hmm. responding to you, they'll walk away and they'll ignore you. Right. Now, on, on my situation, I got quiet because there were some things I needed to say, and I knew that they weren't going to be were receptive, receptive to what I was yeah, saying. That's, that's, yeah, that's a different type. That's different. Right. That's just un, uh, unmatched communication. But, yeah, it, it, communication is so very important, and we all are constantly working on communication. Right. There is no perfect communicator out there. You know, At all. People might say they are. If anybody says they're perfect at anything, I just kind of roll my eyes because exactly no such thing. We're human. You know? That's right. Ego gets, in, ego gets in the way a lot of the time. Right. I'm a passionate person. I have very passionate views and opinions about some things. Right. Now, some people may think I get angry. I'm not angry. I'm just passionate. Exactly. Right? It's, it's a, I'm a true believer. A though. I'm a true believer. I am a true believer in having conversation. I'm a true believer in, <laughs> Conversation fix things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm a yeah. true believer in that. But, you know, you're going to run into these people on this road called life sometime where 
It just might not work out that way. Listen, man, I was in, I like listening to TikTok lives because some people spout some nonsense. Right. Right. And I like, I like to see how they interact with people who are calling them out on it. Right. And I was with, um, in one, I'm trying to remember, I can't remember what her name is. Anyway, and she just had like, she was talking about the Bible and Christianity and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And I'm like, well, if you fall, if you're a follower of Jesus, you're believing feeding the poor and helping the hungry and all that stuff. Right. And she's right. like, poor people should be put to work in work firms and, um, a, a minister came on and started talking to her and she was just trashing him and I was like the man's trying to educate you and you're just not you're so caught up in your view that she right. wasn't listening to anything anybody else had to say was, and I think that's where the problem at today in, in, in today's world man we want to be heard first mm-hmm. instead of listening to get to the problem and, and you know what I'm saying and get over the yeah. hump we want to be heard first. Oh, there's lots of, there. I think people don't realize like there's lots of platforms where you can be heard, but if you open your platform up, then you need to listen as well. Because there's yeah, you have a point there. You have to have conversations with diverse people with diverse backgrounds to understand what's really going on. Exactly. Because if you only look at one side of things, you're never going to get the full picture. Exactly. Say like the Palestine issue. Mm-hmm. Yep. A lot of people don't understand the history behind it. Exactly. A lot of people don't understand the history of the new canal that's being built and where it's going to end up. There's a exactly. lot of things going on that people people don't understand that you can disagree with a far right government and still support the people that are that are forced to live under that government. You know, speaking of that, one of my one of my um, Facebook friends from over in New York, right? She's a world traveler. Her son's a soccer player over in you know. Over and uh, over the pond, all that stuff, right? And she's a sister. So when this thing first started popping off with you know with Israel and Palestine, she was like, "Pray for Israel." Yo, shouldn't be playing with God's people. I wanted to comment so bad, but she knows my stance on that. That whole situation, she knows my stance on those people yeah. that's in Israel right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and everybody just piled on the comment saying, yeah, that's God's people. That's God's people. God gave them that land, not knowing that those people were placed there in 1947. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I wanted to say something so bad. I wanted to say something so bad. You, you guys. Are... Say something. Speak up. I'm like, no, nah, I just walked away from it. I walked away from it. I said, let me get away from it because I was. I was more heated than anything, than you know, because she know better. I'm just, I was more heated is, than anything, and I just I left it alone. I left it alone. Uh, I quote, I um, let me pull up the quote that I posted. Was it? Oh yeah, because I have the conversations all the time. And I'm never afraid to speak up because I. No matter what anybody says, I will always speak up for the press. Hey, send me hate mail all you want. I'm not going to stop. So I, post, I posted on my page, the media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty, to make the guilty innocent. And that's power because they control the minds of the masses. And there's Boom. a second part. Um, where is it? I'm going to find it, but the... The oppressed. I'll keep looking for it. Gotcha, gotcha. So on this effective communication, man, even with mm-hmm. even with that situation that's going over there in the Middle East, you know, effective communicating, man, effective communicating fixes, you know, it'll fix everything. If you if you yeah. communicate effectively, you're not being manipulative. Let's let's keep yeah, it let's keep it a buck. There's a lot of manipulation going on over there right now. Oh yeah, Let's and keep it if, it's um, I lost a lot of uh, respect for the media when I worked the Swiss Air uh, crash off Peggy's Cove in Canada, right. um, because of things that they did. Like there's one instance where I was I was in the military, so we did uh, VIP security. We escorted the families when they came out. We escorted them down to the rocks and we escorted them out and everything like that. 
Right. And I remember vividly this one time we were escorting a, um, this poor lady lost her husband and her kids and in-laws because they were all flying. Oh, she had a meeting. She was flying later. Mm -hmm. So they were leaving. And we, I told my troops, I said, cover the window, stand with your back to the window so they can't get any pictures in. Right. right. So we had all the windows effectively covered and this cameraman pushed me and I said, touch me again and I will punch you. And he's like, freedom of the press. Um, and of course we had full, and I said, no, you don't have freedom of the press. You're not moving me. Right. And he pushed me again, so I hit him. And people like, you can't do that. And the Mountie's like, he laid his hands on her. Right? Don't touch the shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. And they just became so rude. Like we would turn, we would be down at the water with them, and you could hear the cameras and you could see the lenses. And I'm like, you know what, man? These these people are in pain right now. Leave them alone. Right. Isn't and it crazy just, that you know the entire world is in turmoil and it's all due to miscommunication. Oh, it was a lot more than miscommunication. A lot more yeah, than that, but it, it is. But when I say miscommunication, let's just talk about. Let's say um, even with the Trump situation, miscommunication. They just believe anything without doing the research. Listen. That's not effective communicating. That's straight manipulation. Yeah, it's. Um... Is it? Presidential speeches are written to a grade eighth education. Right. That right there. The um, unfortunately, the education system has let a lot of people down. Right. Both public and private. Yeah. Like I love our teachers. Our teachers are amazing, but their hands are tied behind their back nine times out of ten with what yep. they can teach. Right. And so a lot is lost on young minds. Oh, he left. So, you know, communication is is something that should be taught in school and it's not. Right? Like yeah, we, teach, we teach kids how to read and write, but we don't teach them how to effectively communicate. Unless they're in debate class. And even then it's not really effective. I have my own, I have my own, I have my own personal thoughts on why they don't teach that. Teach that. Mm -hmm. But why do you think they don't teach it? Why they don't teach communication? Yeah. The, the school system is set up to create factory workers. That's what the school people in the back up. who didn't hear it. Yeah, it's set up to create factory workers. It's, it's set up to create low-skilled workers because we need people who will be able to follow orders without a question. That's why people right. like don't question authority because you don't want people who have critical thinking skills who, when they get to a job, is not going to be taken advantage of. That's why exactly. there's so much the whole people don't want to work anymore. It's not that Gen Z doesn't want to work. It's that Gen Z knows their worth. Boom. So they're not going to be taken advantage of. Exactly. There's a whole, that's a whole different thing. And if they think Gen Z is bad, these poor fools have not met Gen Alpha. Right. Xavier's crew, they are, they are not playing with yeah, nobody. Be, those are the folks. Gen Alpha is going to be the ones that change the world. Oh, yeah. They're not, here for, they're not here for games. Exactly. Every single one of them acts like an old soul who's been here before. Right, right, right. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, oh, but this is... I found the quote. Um, okay. Okay, this, this media is a irresponsible media that makes the criminal look like the piece of victim, make the victim look like he's a criminal. If you aren't careful, the media will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. Yeah. That's, sort That's of what's the happening right now. Call psychological warfare. Yeah. This like, is exactly right. happening right now, 24-7, 365, constantly on the TV. Yeah. Mar uh, Since October 7th, constantly. Anyone who anyone who was deemed a freedom fighter who was fighting for their people to be oppressed was deemed a terrorist. Right. The First Nation. Here's the thing, and this is for the people in the States. They're getting fed and don't even realize it. They're getting fed by CNN, all these news outlets. They're getting fed by that constantly. Yeah. Programming, programming. Well, most of them, uh, they're owned by a small amount of people who yeah. own all the, the media. Right? Exactly. <laughs> but here's the thing. Communication, if you know how to effectively communicate, 
you can see the body language when people are talking to you. You can right. see when they lean forward or when they lean back or when they cross their feet away from you, right? If people are mirroring you, if they're not, what's going, what they're saying, how they're saying it. Nine, a lot of the time they're going to say stuff without saying it and you can pick right. up on that. Right. Right. That's like people saying uh, they can tell when somebody's lying. Right. And a lot of people are like, oh, if they're looking up to the left, they're lying. I'm like, that doesn't work for everybody. Exactly. <laughs> you know? But a lot of people have a tell. Like, you know that movie, um, Why They Get Married? Yeah, the, the Tyler Perry movie. Yeah. The guy says, you, you know what it, I'm but, saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It. That's his tell for his, he's lying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? Are you serious? Yeah. In the movie, um, what is Angela's husband's name? Marcus? I told you I don't get I can't get through those Tyler Perry movies. Yeah. But. Well, whatever what whatever his name is, that's it. He has a lie. Whenever he lies, that's what he does before he lies. Right, right, okay. right, right. So people pick up on those things when you know somebody for a long time, you can tell when they're not telling you the truth. Well, let me you ask can you feel something. Their energy switch. Well, let me ask you something. So mm -hmm. when people take issue with one another, why is it so hard to talk about it? Why is it so hard to bring it up why is it so hard to approach that person and say hey listen let's have this conversation on what you did to me why is that so hard people take people, years and some people hold on to you know they hold a grudge for years on top of years not knowing that you're the one that's being affected the one that's holding the grudge is the one that's being affected yeah the person that wronged you has gone on with his life oh yeah nine times i tell the one that, that, that's wrong like I will I'm I will admit my toxic trait is I hold on to a grudge. <laughs> I'll still be friends with you. But, hold on a second, hold on a second. But I don't see I don't see you being quiet about it. Come on now. I know no. you. Oh no, I'll be friends with you and I'll talk to you, but I will limit my interaction. Because you there won't you get go. a second chance, right? There but here's go. the thing, a lot of people get their egos involved. And if you've been hurt, you don't want to get hurt by this person again. That's the first part. Right. The other part that is sometimes it's difficult to have conversations if you don't think that person will acknowledge what they've done. Right. right? And some people won't get closure or feel like they've been righted, the wrong has been righted, if that other person won't admit that, oh, yeah, I, I was wrong about that. Right. Some people will refuse find, to apologize. I find it more refreshing and more rewarding when you open up and tell that person exactly how you feel and exactly mm -hmm. how they made you feel. Like I've learned over the years and I've acquired these tools to, hey, listen, sometimes I'm not going to get that apology. Yeah. But I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Yeah. But some I'm people definitely aren't prepared, say what I'm gonna say. prepared for, yeah, some people aren't prepared for the one-way conversation. Exactly. You know, sometimes it's, sometimes you just a matter of have that conversation on paper and write it all out and burn it and be done with it. Exactly. You know, but you free yourself. Wouldn't you agree that you free yourself? When you do have that conversation, even though it's a one-way conversation? Yeah, if if you have the conversation or you write the conversation out, yes, it can be very freeing. Right. Like I, I'm firmly a believer in writing letters and burning them just to get all the that energy and emotion out. Now that process, explain to the audience. I know what you're talking about. What writing just yeah, writing and burning. If if somebody has wronged you, write everything that they've wronged you about clear everything out of your soul of, that you want to tell that person write it all down go outside and burn it and just watch it dissolve and then just let it go with the flames this is so funny this is funny that you said i'm gonna be it's gonna be a transparent moment for me the exact thing that thing the, the exact same thing that you're talking about mm -hmm. i did that with the four horsemen book but i just published it and created a a publishing company and released that book. Mm -hmm. Um, and I all these are all the things I wanted to say to my father, but he was gone right. at this point. I couldn't say the things that I wanted to say. I was the last person that my father saw before he closed his eyes, and I never got a chance to say the things I really wanted to say. And when I sat down to write that book, when I tell you that was the most I've cried throughout my entire life. Oh, yeah. Most, it was so most. freeing and so rewarding. I was like, you know what? I'm going to share this book with the world and help someone else to get over their hump. But mm -hmm. that's exactly what I did. I didn't burn it. 
I published it. Yeah, most most books of um, self discovery are therapeutic. Yeah, and it was I very therapeutic it. for me. It was yeah. very very rewarding, and I knew he didn't hear it, but I was able to release. Yeah, and that was the most refreshing thing ever in my life. That's when my transition started happening. Yeah, listen, man, I took off. I'm off the 18th to the 26th. And, you know, I don't celebrate American Thanksgiving. I already celebrate right, Thanksgiving. Right. And I'm writing my book during that nine days. One, two, what, seven, eight, yeah, nine days. So my goal is to have that finished at the end of the nine days. You have a title? What? You have a title? Journey Back to You. I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I was, it was originally going to be Journey Back to Me, but then I realized that I'm not, although the book is a, it's about me and for me. It's for other people too. So right. journey back to you makes more sense. That book was and so I rewarding, man. Become a whole different title. Exactly. It's actually when I when I started writing those books, I started the books with, as you know, the conversation. And you know, mm -hmm. I had volume one, volume two, conversation with Trent Limited edition, all this other stuff. But yeah. the one book that kept on plaguing me was that Four Horsemen book. That I, it was there, sitting on my desk. Yeah. But I refused to pick it up and start writing again, you know, completing it and whatnot. But the moment I finished it, my life started hitting on all cylinders. Yeah. I started traveling with that book and traveling abroad, speaking. Everybody wanted to talk about Romello and his brothers yeah. in this book. It was so rewarding for me, man. It was so rewarding. The, here's the thing. The book that we have the hardest time writing is a book that we need to write. Yeah, absolutely right. right. That, and yeah. I had come face to face with one of my biggest critics um, on Facebook the other day. Like, I thought this person absolutely hated me because right. they never had anything positive to say. Right. So she sends me a message. She's like, When are you putting your book out? I'm like, Why this mother? Well, I'm like, Why? Why do you care about my book? She's like, Well, you make me very defensive. I'm like, I don't even talk to you, ma'am. I don't right. know how I'm making you defensive. I'm like just doing doing me. I've never had a conversation. It's just with straight talk. Always... That's why. That's why yeah. you're straight and talk. She, yeah, and she's like, you say stuff that hits home, and I don't know what to do with it after you said it because then you move on to somebody else, and then something else hits home, and then I'm stuck with everything you're saying, and I don't, I have nothing. To, I don't know what I'm doing with it. I'm like, all right, I'll write the book, and we'll get it done. You no, know, like I, I was talking to a viewer about you, maybe about three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they were talking about how hard you are. You, your stances are very hard and straight and direct to the point. But I'm like, but if you sat down and you really listened to her, yeah, she's giving you truth and giving you tools to move on. Yeah. Or, or giving you tools on how to deal with things. If you sat down and don't listen to the way she's coming across, you have to the message, get the message and understand exactly what she's saying. So don't listen to get offended. Yeah. Listen to understand. Here's the thing. Sugar, sugar coating things doesn't put you in an uncomfortable space to, for growth. Exactly. exactly. And in order to get growth, you need to get uncomfortable. You need to exactly. hit the spots that, that hurt sometimes. Right. So I totally agree with you because when I was writing these books, man, even with chapter the Delta here, Mm -hmm. I had to write that book. I had to do it. Those were the two hardest books I've ever written in my life. I've written 10 books. Those books were the hardest. Those two. Yeah. Four Horsemen book, Chapter the Delta. And you know why for that one. But yeah. it was hard for me. It was very hard because I didn't want to face my reality at that point. Mm -hmm. But in mm -hmm. order for me to face my reality, I had to put it on paper and release it. Oh, yeah. I I know specifically chapters three and four of my book are going to are going to put me in the corner curled up crying i don't I even know wait. that just I knowing the title this book. i cannot you know wait I, mean? to I can't it's, wait to read it it's all it's all about the doing the hard work and it's going to have like meditation exercises it'll have different coping mechanisms for you so it's going to be like it'll like a one-stop shop kind of thing exactly. to help you work through like a grounding exercise at the end of every chapter but it's it's all about um listening and understanding who you are at your core and be able to get back to that because some we 
like I got lost in being somebody's wife and then being right. Xavier's mother. And I forgot who Dee was. And Dee is a pretty amazing person all on her own. Absolutely. And when you forget, when you find that person again, your entire view of the world changes. Isn't it refreshing, man? Isn't it yeah. refreshing? Because I lost myself. I mean, you were there, so you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I lost myself in that situation. I was completely lost. Yeah. I threw I threw everything into that one person. I put all my eggs in that one basket. Completely yeah. lost myself. So yeah. can you imagine how rewarding that felt for me to finally release her and to finally release my father? And, and those two books were so refreshing and rewarding, man, until it was... I turned into a totally different person. Even oh, though yeah. I found myself, I renewed myself as well. Yeah, because once you release all that history, all the stories, all the stuff, the beliefs that you had about how that your that life was going to turn out to be, right? Then you can get to back to where you need to be. Exactly. And then you can make different decisions, and you look at things differently, and you walk differently. I mean, it's it's a different view on the world exactly and you can Absolutely. never go back to that person because now you're different you're no longer the same person i'm not the same person i wrote this quote maybe about a year ago if i can remember it you just struck a thought here for me i was like um i'll paraphrase it in but i completely changed so you i'll have to you'll have to reintroduce yourself to me again uh -huh. something like that i can't yeah. remember it verbatimly but yeah, I've completely changed. So anybody who knew me, they're going to have to reintroduce themselves again. Mm -hmm. But here's the, here's the thing, though. Sometimes we let a select few people know who we truly are the whole time. Dig a little deeper. Like, I have some friends who I know I am safe with. That if I called up today, no questions asked and said I need to move a body, they would be here move it bury it and we would never speak of it again right? yep and i know i can name those three people two of them i saw who two of them drove five hours just to have lunch with me that's good stuff that's the kind of friends we are that's good stuff because they they both had to work and all that stuff but you know what it's sadly we 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 don't have that with everybody because you can't have that with everybody that's because true. not everybody will be a safe place for you. Not everybody will allow you to be vulnerable or will be vulnerable with you. Right. Mm -hmm. And when and you do find true. that one person, cling on to them. Like, I have a very tight circle. Most of the people I've known, I've known for decades. Right. right? I have an auxiliary circle outside that who know me, but they have known me for de decades so that we don't have the same type of conversations. Exactly. But, but you you still have to communicate effectively with everybody. That's true. If you yes, like them, you don't like them. You still need to effectively communicate. Because how you treat people that you don't like is how you treat everybody. The conversation was getting so good, I totally forgot about the <laughs> effective communicating. Mm -hmm. Conversation getting good. That's what it's called, gumbo talk, folks. Gumbo yeah. straight talk. I, I got it you is. back on track, so don't worry about it. It's all good. <laughs> So, yeah, but here's the thing. If you want to effectively communicate, you need to listen. And listen to understand, not listen to respond. Right. Don't always get defensive. Like, people may communicate with you, and they may not know how to communicate, so they may communicate in a way that seems like attacking. Right. But sometimes you still have to ignore their communication style and work through it the best way you can right. so that you don't revert to the style that they're giving you. If it's not so, effective. So going back to the, the two previous podcasts we did on giving up men and women, mm -hmm. honestly, you know, after looking at those podcasts that we did and, um, you know, going back over them and editing all that stuff, honestly, I, I truly believe that that's the major problem with that situation. Yeah. Lack of communication. Yeah, because it's unmet, of, yeah, unmet expectations. Like the 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 list of where people aren't going to eat. Well, if you don't, if you have a list where you don't, where you're not going to eat, tell the other person they won't take you there. Simple. Right. Yeah. You know? Like I went out. I went. I, I was asked out for dinner, and uh, I said I don't eat seafood. 
They're like, okay, so we can go to a seafood restaurant. Simple, simple, simple. Life, life is a lot easier. Um, we tend to make it harder than it is most of the time. Absolutely, I totally agree with that, man. Right. I say kids. it all the time, man. Life is simple. We as humans make it very hard. Yeah. Watch kids on the playground. Kids on the playground will make friends instantaneously. Right. 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 You want to go play? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Done. That's it. <laughs> yeah. You know so it's, it's we get caught up in our egos and our wants, and we don't think about what the other person may want or what the other person may need, and we right. we just focus on ourselves. It's you know that's great and fine and dandy, but it's not going to get you to where you need to be. Absolutely. Right. So totally get it. Yeah. And sometimes you have to, there's no way to eliminate the ego because it's part of who we are. It's a primal instinct, but you can work with it to help you become a better person. A lot of people don't know that. Run, mm -hmm. run that by that. What does that look like? A ton of people don't know that, that you work along with your ego. I've been working along with this ego ever since I made my transition. Yeah. So working with your ego, because most people try to work against it, because they try to think that ego is all about their image or their titles right. or all this stuff. Ego is much more than that. Ego is part of who you are. You can't get Absolutely. rid of parts of who you are. Right? Like some people, like you'll see some people and they're like a very calm, like Ken Reeves, very calm like soul right that's that's part of his ego that's part of who he is right right i'm not a calm person i'm a very passionate person i get upset the red hair comes naturally so if you expect me to calm between calm 24 7 it's not going to happen right I tell, I tell i tell some you know some folks still to this day it's like oh you've changed now i'm still that same dude yeah i'm still that same guy i just know how to manage everything that goes on with me yeah and that's like just I, real yeah i rarely get angry that's just real i just manage it better i manage the ego way better as you i mean you've been knowing me for 20 yeah. years yeah. i manage his ego sometimes it leaks out but but i manage it i manage it very yeah. well there's there's nothing wrong with, with letting it leak out because there's nothing wrong with saying you know what i'm pretty hot shit. pretty much and honestly yeah. to be honest with you I couldn't have gotten, and tell me if this sounds crazy or not, because I truly think like this. I truly believe this. I couldn't have got over the hump of being paralyzed and blind in one eye and got my sight back. Everything's good now, but I couldn't get over the hump without my ego. No, because you need it. I the couldn't have gotten over that hump yeah. without my ego. And yeah. even in a wheelchair, even from bedridden, the ego, the, the ego was there with me. And I couldn't have done it without the ego. Yeah, I'm not saying it in a braggadocious way. I'm just saying I needed yeah. I need, I need that half of me. I need that other yeah. thing in me to get me over that. Yeah, it tells you to get up. You're better than this. You, you, you can fight this. Yeah. Exactly. Can you imagine me balling up in the corner saying, I can't do this? Yeah. I would never do it. I was too stubborn, man. I was too stubborn. I had to get out of that wheelchair. I had to get out of that bed. Yeah. So I totally you know, agree with you. The ego is something that you you have to keep it. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's okay to be not okay. So just so people are aware of that. It's okay to be curled up in the corner and crying. Because eventually you'll stop crying because you'll work through your emotion. Right? It's okay to do that. And part of that is communicating and telling people, I'm not okay right now. Right. And asking for support. Because yeah. people... I am horrible at asking for support, yeah. but you know what? But what I found out, and then I called up a friend. I'm like, "Listen, this just happened." I had so much support, I was overwhelmed. Like right. I didn't know what to do with all of it. Right. And they're like, "D, you're always helped us. Now let us help you." And it's like, "Wow, this is this is humbling." But you know what? It it's, is. It's when you're so used to actually doing it alone, though. It's it's yeah. very humbling when you're so used to doing it alone. And that's a trauma response, doing it alone and not asking for help. Dig a little deep. Because what happens is if you've been, if you grew up and help was never offered or you asked for help and never received it, 
then you become a person who doesn't depend on anybody else and does it on your own because you can't um, depend on anybody else except yourself. Right. Now, what I'm talking about, like doing alone, like for me, I get it transparent again. For me, as I as I got older, I was starting to do things alone. Once, you know, when I moved out to California and doing all those different things on my own, you know, I was. 18, 19, 20 years old, doing things alone. I never even looked for it because I always did the job myself. Yeah. I never looked for the assistance for, you know, from the record company. I did it myself. I didn't look for my friends. Hey, man, can you help me with this? I did it myself. And these mm -hmm. guys were in the same group with me. I just did it myself. Mm -hmm. Why did you do it yourself, though? Why didn't you get help? Honestly, because I didn't trust them with it. Is exactly what I just said. So I didn't. I didn't trust him. I didn't trust that they would do it effectively. It is what it is because you can't yeah. depend on somebody else. So yeah. you know, and that's effective communication is asking for help. Right. Ask effective communication is giving help when it's asked. Right. Yeah. And being able to tell somebody, no, I can't help you at this time. Right. If you can't help, like. Communication, there's so much more to it than just saying hi, bye, and like let's go for dinner. It's, it's much deeper than that. Absolutely. Man, yeah. life life is so much easier when you yeah. have friends that you communicate with and it flows. It's gonna it's gonna be a natural flow. If it's effective mm -hmm. communicating, it's gonna be a very natural flow. Yeah. Won't be any wrinkles in that relationship at all. Friendship, oh. relationship, romantic relationship, you know, brother, sister, whoever. If that communication is very effective, it's that is going to flow. Yeah, it's going to flow. But a lot of times we get caught up in self and what we think we should look like, or what we think we should look right. have opinions on, or what we think. Because a lot of people are not don't have the confidence in themselves to do what's right because it's right, regardless of how popular it is, because they don't want people saying you're wrong. Right. Or you're this or you're that. You know, it's not easy having an unpopular opinion sometimes. Yeah. But if that's your view, then then carry that view. You know? Be ready to defend it. All right. If you saw how many darts were thrown at us on this podcast, well, you probably already know because you get the email as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, wow, this is interesting. You interesting. Know what? what is it? Hit dog holler? There you go. Right. And a lot there of people, here's the, com here's the thing. We have conversations. We never mention anybody's name. We don't. And 99% of the time, it's, it's all general. Yet people will call and act like I mentioned them by name. I'm like, man. Like, sir, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. <laughs> I don't know your situation. What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. Why are you talking about me? Like, all right. Well, why do you think, why do you think, People take offense to straight talk like that. I mean, I mean, we we give them the business. We give them the business. So why do you why do you think they take offense to that straight talk, that gumbo talk, as we say it? Because it hits home. Hmm. It's like getting a red mark on your on your report on your report card. Right. If you got A's, everything is great. You hit that red mark, and you get a B plus or an A minus. That hits home quick. Right, right, right. And people people get very defensive if they think what somebody's saying is about them, even if the person is not talking about them at all. That's why right. people have an issue with uh, people speaking foreign languages around them. Because it's very they're very self conscious. Right. If they have any insecurity whatsoever, somebody speaking a foreign language around somebody will make them think they're talking about them. You know, I'm at a, I'm at a space in my life that even even now at this age and all the all the tools I've acquired over the years. If I see something that's gonna help me, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take it in. I'm gonna assess it first. I'm gonna take it in. I'm genuinely gonna take it, even if it hurts a little bit. A lot of people aren't ready for that growth, though. That's, 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 you know, that's, that's, that's a shame. That it's, it's, it's a shame. Yeah, it, it is what it is. But yeah. you know. Those people that constantly say, I'm good, I don't need help, everything's great. 
You know, those are the people who aren't having effective communication nine times out of ten. Right, right. When right, they're right. talking to people, people are getting called in their names or yelling and arguing and nothing's being said. Do you see how good KOBE is doing tonight? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's not yeah. moving. He's, he's good. Just being himself, yeah. Really I gave him this up. um the vet gave him some medicine. He has allergies real bad, right? Yeah. So the allergy stuff wasn't working for him. Yeah, you pay all that money for that stuff and it, it doesn't even work for him. So I started YouTube and some stuff on allergies, right? So I made a mixture, 50-50 mixture of um apple cider vinegar and water. Mm-hmm. Rubbed him down from head to toe. Head to toe. All the way to his tail. He slept like a baby last night. Oh yeah. Slept like a except something simple as that. Yeah, I use the same thing on my scalp because I I have very sensitive skin. I and I use the wrong shampoo really? because yeah, because the I'll have it to break loose. So an apple cider vinegar rinse is the first thing to help clear your scalp right up. He slept like he slept like a baby last night. And you know all that, all those the vet bills and all that craziness, man. That stuff it wasn't working for him. Yeah. He was so miserable last night. I was like, let me look this up so I can get him straight. We I was glad I looked what, some, Sometimes we get so caught up in pharmaceuticals that we forget the herbal remedies that were worked for thousands of years. Exactly. Right prior to, so. Exactly. It is what it is. And like um, skin allergies are a lot of time if it's not a product, it's food. Yeah. Like Xavier has eczema. So if we avoid a lot of dairy, he's okay. Yeah, I'm but in the process can... of changing his diet and everything. So yeah. and get away from the beneficial. Yeah. Check out the try him on different foods. It, it, slowly try him on different foods because you know how uh dog's yes. stomachs are. Yeah, very sensitive stomach. But you know, it, it's it's all good. and even then it's a communication with the vet to make sure that the, you're getting giving them all the information. That's like true. How many people? How many people go to their doctor and don't give them all the all the symptoms they have, everything that's happened, and then that's they true. they wonder why they don't get a proper diagnosis? Right. Right. It's all about sharing information. Yeah. Like it's you have to be able to verbalize what's happening, good right. and bad. Right. Yeah, absolutely. To get effective right. Communication no matter where you're at. Right. Well, we're coming up on five before the hour. I cannot wait till next week. So we can have this conversation on Israel and Palestine. Yeah, I can't wait. Do you want to record that tomorrow or Tuesday? It's up to you. I'm 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 ready to go for it. Okay. I'm ready to go okay. for it. It could be. You know what? Tuesday's my off day from the gym. We could do it on Tuesday. Okay. Um, you good for Tuesday? I'm good. I just need a pen. So again, folks, if you guys didn't hear us um, at the open of the show, we're not going to be no lo- we're no longer going to be streaming live to Facebook and no other platforms but our own. The only other platform that we'll be streaming live to is YouTube and our own B2GUnityTV.com, right there on the Roku channel. So and you could always catch us, uh, Coach D and I, twenty four seven three sixty five on demand. All the straight talk from Coach T, everything. All the stuff is there. We have mountains of content that you guys could go through and check out and whatnot. And we're going to do these lives and, and you're going straight to the channel, straight to YouTube. And that's it. We're not doing anything with Facebook as far as live streaming goes. Because I, I don't like the, you know, the idea of being chained and, you know, muzzled. And I, I just can't, I can't get with that. So we're not going to be, no, we're no longer going to be doing that. To uh, live streaming to Facebook, no shade right, to yeah. Facebook, but hey, man, sometime you gotta do what you gotta do. Listen, it, Facebook jail. I've been in Facebook jail plenty of time, and you know what? I always and everybody will say that if you don't want to be harnessed, then always, always have your own platform. Exactly. Right? So as a, as I'm you know as I'm sitting there, I'm like, why are they really gonna lock me out like this? Like, dummy, you have your own platform. You mm-hmm. guys talk on your own platform. Yeah. So just, you know, you we live stream from the platform. We just, as a courtesy, we share it to some of our friends on Facebook. But 
There's no more. No more of that. We're not going to do that because I, I hate to be handcuffed. I, I don't like to be, I can't say what I really want to say. That irks me. So going forward, B2GUnityTV.com, right there on the Roco channel, live right in your living room. So and we've been doing this for what? How, how long we have had that, uh, that station? Over a year, right? At least a year, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's all good, all good. But we're always going to be on YouTube live as well. So you can always check out, you know, YouTube and subscribe there and you'll catch us there and some good stuff there, man. Real good stuff. Real good stuff. So I, I can't wait for the Palestine Israel conversation on Tuesday. Well, I'll, we'll release that to you guys. Did Tuesday you watch the week. documentaries I posted on Facebook? I said it one more time. Did you watch the documentaries I posted? I saw one of them. Yeah. So. Breaking the Silence, which is uh, IDF soldiers talking about their time, and Tantora talking about um, what happened during that, in that, I can't even call it an incident, like it's <sighs> during the Nakba. When I got gotcha. the, you. The, I got gotcha. you. And I can't, you know, that's why I'm, I was asking to, to have this conversation because People really need to know, and you're very informed on what's going on over there. People really need to know what's really going on. And it's, it's, our, it's our job, our responsibility as humans yeah. to share the knowledge if we have it. Yeah. I, I have friends who, is, who are Israeli. I have friends who are Palestinian. I have friends who, rob, who are rabbis and friends who are imams. And I get my information from people there that are on the ground. Um, exactly. I can't currently talk to my Palestinian friends because there's no communication, but I right. I talk to my Israeli friends, and even my Israeli friends are having trouble now with the IDF because they're trying to protest what's happening. Right. You know, it's no, it's a no-win situation for anybody. So, but here's the thing: if if people just stop and and pay attention, they'll see people all over the world by the millions are protesting mm -hmm. in the streets in other countries. Yeah, that's how apartheid got turned around. Because the world spoke up. Right? Remember, Nelson know. Mandela was a terrorist. <laughs> there is yeah, a right. statue of Nelson Mandela in Palestine, in Gaza. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that. And you know what? There's so much history, and there's so much that you have to study, and read up. That I'm not going to get everybody caught up on it in a in a one hour right. conversation. I, I will I will say this, and I'll leave it alone until. We record on Tuesday, but it's strange for me that you know someone's fighting over land that don't even belong to them, and I'll leave it at that. All right. Well, you know how everybody knows my feelings on it, right? Not before I denounce what Hamas says. Why we have to say that before we even say Palestine be free exactly. from the river to the sea? You it's know, two, it's, it's two totally different situations there. It's two totally different. Hamas is Hamas, and Palestinians are Palestinians. Four thousand babies have been killed. Exactly. Israel has dropped more bombs on Gaza. And this, this last thing, this, this recent thing, this recent thing that they dropped um, on this refugee camp. Yeah. So what was Hamas in this? I mean, come on, man. Yeah. Come on. We'll talk. We'll talk about it on Tuesday. We'll talk about it. We'll it's definitely talk about it. We'll so until next, until next week, uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, we'll come up with a topic for Sunday. But remember, no more Facebook Lives. We're going to be streaming directly from our platform, B2GUnityTV.com. Hit the live button. Watch now. You can catch us there live, right in your living room, on the Roku channel. And also on YouTube Live, you can catch us there as well. So it's good mm -hmm. stuff. But everybody from all over the world, we see you guys and. The support is amazing. We truly appreciate it. Just for listening to us. We really appreciate that. Yeah. It's much appreciated, man. Really appreciate it. And I took for granted about that reach that we had. And we do have a very long reach. So yeah. really appreciate you guys. From people Apple like Podcasts. I'm sorry. I said people like honesty and, honesty and authenticity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is. So the users from Apple Podcasts to Spotify, and actually we're, uh, we've submitted to the iHeartRadio as well. So we appreciate you guys for tuning in, and 
We'll talk to you guys on the other side of Sunday. Bye. You guys be happy. Hug your loved ones. Conversations with Trent in conjunction with Taylor Kennedy Media and your radio network would like to thank you for calling in and listening to tonight's episode. We hope that tonight's conversation offended you just enough to turn your mirror inward to come back for more. So until next week's conversation, be epic.